Hi, my name is Mail Shaheli. I'm a lecturer in computer science at the University of Bradford. Uh, the work I'm about to present is part of a project named Qualdash, which is led by Professor Rebecca Randall, also at the University of Bradford. Uh, most of the work was done while I was a postdoc at the University of Leeds under the supervision of Professor Roy Ruddle. The Qualdash project is funded by the National Institute for Health Research in England, and it aims for the adaptable generation of visualization dashboards for healthcare quality improvement. Now, before I tell you more about Qualdash, I'd like to give you a bit of background on what healthcare quality improvement, or QI for short, is. Uh, simply defined as the process of enabling those who commission, deliver, and receive healthcare to um, measure and improve healthcare services. And now, this idea of measuring and improving healthcare services is supported by a number of data sets that are managed by NHS England, and these data sets are called National Clinical Audit Data, um, which records uh, interactions between patients and different services in the healthcare system. These audits are sort of separate islands, they are maintained and managed by different audit coordinators in different hospitals across the country. So the Qualdash mission is to design, develop, and evaluate QI dashboards that offer adaptability in order to support this diversity of audits in different units across different hospitals, uh, ease of use to support users with varying levels of visualization and data literacy, timeliness so that clinical teams can monitor their performance and apply changes if needed, and safety of interpretation of the visualizations that are shown on the dashboard so that users in a hospital share a common understanding of how they are performing. We followed the design study methodology by Settlemeyer et al. This is the timeline of our project, which lasted for about two and a half years. We're going to start with the first phase of the project, which is the task analysis phase. Uh, in which we we had two main activities, which are interviews and co-design workshop. Uh, for the interviews, we spoke with 54 different healthcare professionals, ranging from physicians to nurses, managers, uh, support staff, uh, hospital board members and quality committee members, information managers and other healthcare staff. Our task analysis comprised of extracting tasks or questions that people wanted answered from the National Clinical Audit datasets from the transcripts of these interviews. We've extracted 124 such tasks and we've listed them all in the supplementary material of the paper. We then started grouping those tasks based on our uh, thematic understanding of the quality metrics that these tasks were centered around. And then the next step in our task analysis was to try to find sequences and see if there are any connections between the tasks that cater to these different metrics. In order to find these sequences, we conducted a one-day co-design workshop in which we asked participants to generate stories around tasks and sketch out any processes involved in answering those tasks and also group tasks that are most relevant to specific user groups and prioritize tasks uh, based on their uh, sequence. So the results of our task analysis phase can be summarized in three key findings. The first one of these findings is that the individual metrics have independent task sequences. So these links actually never exist. Uh, whenever there's a sequence between tasks, these sequences usually investigate the same metrics. So they don't really cross much across metrics. The second key finding is that each metric has a set of entry point tasks that involve monitoring uh, some measures over time. And this has been consistently shown in the sketches participated uh, or contributed by our participants. And one of the things that were consistently coming up from clinicians particularly is that they wanted to keep the number of such measures that are being monitored at the entry point to a minimum. And they wanted something simple that tells them where something is worsening in a metric and then they can click and find out more. So building on this idea of clicking to find out more is the key, third key finding of our analysis, which states that further investigation for a metric involves subsidiary tasks and that these subsidiary tasks usually involve the addition of uh, categorical variables. So to break down some of the main measures into subcategories, um, adding more measures for comparison purposes or expanding in time to include different temporal granularities. So before I move any further, I want to stop here and give an example of a sort of clarify a little bit about what we mean by a metric and what we mean by these task sequences pertaining to a specific metric. So let's take a look at this running example of the call to balloon metric and the call to balloon metric captures the time elapsed from well, the time when someone makes a call 
saying I have a heart attack or someone nearby is having a heart attack and the time that the person having, who's having the heart attack um, receives a, a procedure called a balloon stent and this time elapsed between the two events should not exceed 150 minutes which is the national target and so an entry point task for this metric would be what is the proportion of patients meeting the call to balloon target within a unit over time we've seen sketches monitoring this over on a monthly basis in bar charts like the one we're seeing here and then we've also seen sketches that expand on this entry point task by more adding more categories so things like asking for example for those patients who have been delayed have they been directly or indirectly admitted into the hospital uh, they've added also additional measures so looking at the the number of PCIs per, per month or sometimes looking at the average door to balloon time per month uh, so adding more quantitative measures to look at and also expanding in time or looking at different temporal granularities so we've seen sketches looking at this data on an annual basis and others looking at, at it on a quarterly basis Equipped with these findings, we moved on to the analysis phase of Qualdash, and during the analysis phase, we iterated over a number of design decisions based on feedback we received through one-on-one -on -one meetings with frontline analysts in the hospitals, in addition to three focus group sessions that we had, one with prototype intervention and two think aloud sessions. The whole design process was guided by seven design requirements that we identified during the requirements analysis for Qualdash. I won't be able to go through the details of all seven requirements, but let's focus on the first two of these, which capture really the essence of Qualdash. So the first requirement has to do with the um, pre-configured queries. So we need to have these pre-configured queries in order to generate dashboards dynamically uh, that can adapt to different sites, different uh, metrics uh, within those sites and different audits as well. We also wanted to be able through these pre-configured queries to capture uh, the things that needed consensus or agreement in order to have a shared understanding within one site of how they are performing. So things like, for example, patient pathways that lead to these patients being eligible to be included within a specific metric. So uh, the second requirement captures the um, sequence of tasks that we've identified through our task analysis. So having two different states for the dashboard, one is an entry point state and the expanded state, which captures the uh, subsidiary task. In order to address these requirements, we started experimenting with the idea of a card metaphor in which each card represents one metric. Uh, and so there are self-enclosed areas of the screen. They are also expandable to allow users to move on from entry point tasks to um, subsidiary tasks. To support pre-configured queries for Qualdash, we looked at existing grammars like Vagalite and we wanted to subset the design space for Vagalite um, to support only the requirements for the visualization of the entry point and subsidiary tasks for Qualdash. And so to generate an entry point call card like this one for the call to balloon metric, for example, we designed what we call the metric specification structure, which is a compact and concise uh, JSON structure that, that specifies the main measures of the metric and inclusion criteria of patients for this metric and leaves everything else as a pre set for the Qualdash engine to handle. The MSS also captures the subsidiary tasks for a metric, starting with the category subview that uh, creates tabs that correspond to however many categories uh, are needed for subsidiary tasks for the metric. The same applies for the measures with the quantities subview uh, and also with the times subview that shows different temporal granularity. The details of these are described in the paper. Uh, also in the paper and in the supplementary material are the de details of the intervention with prototype session, which is pictured here, and the materials that we used for as a paper prototype for this session, uh, where we asked participants to interact with this paper prototype and tell us about the match between the tasks, the data that were used to generate call cards, and the visual encodings used for these call cards. In addition, we had also two think aloud sessions in which we allowed participants to interact with a software prototype for call in total, we collected 104 comments from these uh, sessions and uh, we use these comments for improving Qualdash in four main areas. So we've applied refinements and improvements to better match the tasks, uh, the expectation in terms of the data definitions and the visual encodings and the graphical user interface uh, element. 
Right. So last but not least, we deployed Qualdash by uh, introducing it into the sites in the period between July and November of 2019. We spent then some time then collecting feedback and refining the configuration of the dashboards. And then we introduced version two of the software early in 2020. Whenever we introduced Qualdash into a site, we started by communicating with the audit coordinator who has access to the audit data. We supplied them with pre-processing scripts, which are written in R, uh, so they can run it on their client side. And these pre-processing scripts then place the data in a data share that is accessible by the Qualdash server that also exists within the hospital site. On the server side, there are data dictionaries that uh, define what to expect in the data files and also configuration files that contain the um, metric specification structures that we described earlier. Obviously, these are fed to the dashboard engine, which also relies on the server side, and the dashboard engine then generates the dashboards and makes them available via web browsers to users within the site. We also collect usage logs uh, through a login mechanism, and these lo logs are also stored in the data share, so they also are kept within the site. Once Qualdash was deployed, we wanted to test it for what it was meant to deliver. In terms of adaptability, we used the engine to generate eight dashboards for two different audits in five hospitals for a total of about 48 different qual cards that have been generated using the engine. In terms of ease of use, we were happy to receive some positive feedback uh, about the fact that it reduced time for a reporting task that used to take about two hours to about 10 minutes. And in terms of data timeliness, we observed that the client server architecture of Qualdash allows people to perform uploads in an ad hoc manner. So whenever they needed more up-to-date dashboards, they were able to do these uploads. And in terms of safety of interpretation, we report a case study in the paper in which we describe a situation where there was a disagreement about the inclusion criteria for patients for a particular metric. And so we were able to use the modular design of Qualdash to take down that qual card that involving that particular metric, leaving everything else in the dashboard intact. And we were able to take that qual card through a series of discussions until we've reached an agreement on the uh, inclusion criteria, at which point we deployed that qual card again. So it, this kind of modular design of Qualdash really helped in this particular case. Right, so in conclusion, we've learned a few lessons from de designing, developing, and deploying Qualdash into these sites. The first of these lessons is that the level of moderation that is provided by the idea of pre-configured queries in Qualdash enables a level of trust in visualized information, knowing that there is going to be safe interpretation. Um, the modular design also of Qualdash that is supported by this idea of a qual card as a self-enclosed area of the dashboard screen enabled focused communication. So we were able to have better feedback from our users as it was very targeted at specific qual cards. We would take down these qual cards, address feedback, and then deploy them back again. So this modular view composition was very helpful in that. And the last but not least uh, is that the sequenced rendering of the views, which is materialized by the qual card expansion process, captures the task sequences that we were able to identify through our analysis for healthcare QI. Thank you very much for listening.